Welcome, listeners, viewers, to the first episode of Come On Now. I'm your lovely host, Don. Not to be confused with Don King, my hair is a lot more lavish. Uh, we're going to be reporting every week with some of the best topics all around sports. It's not going to just be football. It's not going to just be basketball. It's going to be some MMA. We might throw in some badminton. Uh, with that being said, I want to uh, throw in my lovely co-hosts and introduce themselves and why you should listen to them. Hey, man, it's Nick Taylor, man, coming in live from the 213. I mean, I was joking. I'm having a 305, man. Big time basketball, football lover, um, NFL football player, former NFL. Arena. Three time champion, by the way. Three time champion. I ain't want to throw that out there. You know, <laughs> I'm a winner <laughs> my whole life. Been doing it, still doing it. Um, I ran for two fast as hell. <laughs> Don't forget that. But you know, I'm here. We're just here to talk sports, man. I'm here with my boys. Uh, I think y'all are really going to enjoy this. Wow, Nick, uh, you didn't really, uh, Sell yourself. I mean, you're a 6A state champion in basketball, too. So I'll throw that out there for yeah, you. I mean, you, I'm sure that was gonna come soon. you, you yeah. guys did you guys did foul on defense a lot, but it's OK. Um, my name is Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. Uh, I was actually Nick's AAU basketball coach. Um, God, 2006, five around there. It's been a long time. I covered uh, in University of Miami Hurricanes, football, basketball, baseball for upwards of 10 years with uh, Kane's time. And then I founded inside the U.com, which is now under the 24 seven sports banner. Um, that for about 10 years also wrote for the Miami Herald and Sun Sentinel for over 15 years, covering high school, college and professional sports. I am a sports junkie. I study it and we are going to have some fun times on here. Hey, you didn't tell him that I carried your AAU basketball team. Yeah, he, he, he averaged 12 points a game. Yeah, carried, carried us to a two and twelve record. <laughs> Wait, yeah, and the, twelve and two. No, no, two we, were, and... we we were not twelve and two that year. But we struck. We, that was a struggle year. I mean, it was a struggle year. I but the, the, the the funny thing is, is that we actually had some teams that competed. Some games where we competed against the best teams in the country. We did. It was kind of kind of like the Miami Heat. You know, when it time when it's time to play, we stepped it up and we played really really well. But when we played teams that were worse, we kind of no-showed. <laughs> and never explain that one. They didn't get me the ball enough. Well, with that being said, as you guys reminisce on your horrible basketball history as coach and player, we're going to dive in to the college uh, playoff. I, I, this was one of the said topics that Rudy wanted to dive into. So I'm going to let him kick it off. I have a few comments. But Rudy, the floor is yours. College football playoff what do you think i mean college football playoff let me tell you this this just proved to me why fsu should have been in the college football playoff people will tell me i'm crazy because they got blown out 63 to 3 i was at the game uh florida state georgia yes that was like jv versus varsity because 13 starters for florida state did not play in that game um the reality was the reason i thought fsu should have been in that playoff was because they played defense and they could run the ball and what we saw with alabama and michigan was defense and running the ball. Michigan was so much better than Alabama. And yet that was a close game because Michigan made silly mistakes. The, the muff punt, heck, they nearly muffed the game away in the last 30 seconds for that, you know, the, the kick, the punt returner muffs it and he picks it up at the one yard line. He got blown up. I mean, I'm shocked he actually held the ball, but when Michigan ran the ball, Alabama couldn't do anything. And if you actually watch the game, it was 13-7, but it felt like it, they were blowing them out of the building, at least to me. The offensive and defensive lines were absolutely dominating, and yet for some reason Jim Harbaugh felt the need to play around. He threw in his backup quarterback in a 7-7 game for one play, kind of screwed the drive up to start it off. He did that again in the second half, screwed the drive up, to, you know, he just, it's, it's just a waste of, it, it made no sense. And from there, when they made it 7-7, they ran the ball. When they made it 13-7, they ran the ball. Whenever they didn't move the ball, it's because they didn't run the ball. There was a period in time where they pass, 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 run, pass. Um, and if you look at their final drive, when they, after it was 20-13, there was run, run. This is with under four minutes to go. 
run, run, pass, a dump off, which is basically a running play, a run of that miracle that um, the receiver caught off of the tip ball, which, I mean, quite frankly, he saved that quarterback. Because I don't think – I don't know what y'all think, but I don't think J.J. McCarthy's that good. He threw for 221. That's probably his best game in the last six – since uh, since October. And it, I don't think he's that good. I don't think he throws a really good ball. They didn't go down the field at all. But when they ran that ball, they dominated that game. And, you know, I'm not a Bama fan personally. I don't like Alabama. But Michigan showed that they're better. Now, as far as – I don't know if you want to jump into the other game, but I watched Washington dominate the game and a coach almost give the game away like an like a Mario Cristobal moment where he's, for some reason, not putting his knee down. I, I understand that the, the clock didn't match and you would still leave like 10 or 15 seconds on the clock, but because he ran the ball, one, he put his team in danger of turning it over, and then, of course, what happened on third down when his, his, his uh, running back – turns his ankle. I wonder how that ankle turned. Did they did they twist it in the pile? But they need to carry him off the field. However, that should never have happened. You kneel the ball down, you punt it, there's 10 seconds left, game is over. If Texas had won that game, everything that coach had done all year would have been for naught because he would have committed the biggest gaffe in college football history, in my opinion. All right. First of all, I want to say – FSU not getting in was total bullshit, dipshit, shit, shit. Whatever shit it could be, <laughs> that's what it was, man. Because that made no sense. It was horseshit, man. And you got these dumbass people telling me that they shouldn't be in. They got it right after all because all the games came down to the nitty-gritty to the end. But that's not the fucking point. The point was FSU earned it and they deserved to be there. They didn't play their players and now you can look at it from the standpoint they played Georgia and they got their ass for but like Rudy just said, half the team didn't play. They basically just gave up the season. They, they basically went on strike. They went to prove a point that if we're not going to be where we're supposed to be, then we're not going to play this fucking game just to say that at the end of the year, oh, we did beat Georgia. We're technically champions in our heads. And it should be in y'all heads. No, fuck that. People like, we're getting ready for the, for the NFL. And first of all, college is a shit show now. They got lucky that they had good games. But it's a shit show now. Like it's terrible. Like I don't, we're not getting into it right now. But the nail deals, the transfers, the transfer portal, it's hell. Like nobody's playing. Nobody's watching these bowl games anymore. I'm pretty sure the ratings are in the ground. But um, like I said, Florida State should have been there. But we can go into this Alabama Michigan game. It was a good game from the score standpoint. It was a real sloppy to me on my from watching it on my end. Um, Alabama had a chance to win. I, I had no problem with the last play call. I just think the snap kind of threw off the read with the quarterback. Because that's an RPO. But with RPO, you need to catch the ball right in your hands so you can read everything that's going on. you got to make a snap decision. Do I, you know, do I want to throw it out to the sideline? My read on my run, where I'm going to go. Because I think that outside contained DB who came on with zero blitz, he was too wide. And that guard was pulling. And he had room to squeeze by that DB and still get in. So I had no problem with the call. They just didn't execute it the way they needed to, needed to in that situation. On the other end, what Rudy said about J.J. McCarthy, um, I think he played okay. I mean, it wasn't bad. I don't think the pass was terrible. It got deflected by the uh, the blitz and linebacker. The receiver made a hell of a catch because the DB, how he read it from his eyes, was like, well, this is about to get overthrown. I'm about to pick it off game over. But the receiver had like a 38 vertical on that play, made a hell of a catch, saved the game. You know, he got the rewarded for the touchdown. That was a great game. Man. You know, it was a great game. I had no problem with it. And then the next game, Michael was fucking outstanding. He threw some darts. He was diamond it up. He's like 24. This is his, this his sixth year playing college football. I, I hope that you have it right by now. You've been playing for a long time. But nothing against him, but he played well. He did what he was supposed to do. They beat Texas. Um, I wasn't on the hype train about Texas getting in either, but they got in. It was deservingly so. They did beat Alabama earlier, but they did lose to Oklahoma. Who? I mean, yeah. but it was a good game on my end. That one was better than the previous game. I think the offense played pretty well. Washington almost screwed it, just like you run did. 
And I know Rudy was over there throwing shit like you fucking dumbass, just mill the ball. Oh. Did you not see Mario Crystal ball the whole thing early in the year? But they at the end of the day they came out and won, and we're gonna get uh Washington versus Michigan. I think everybody wants to see that game next week. Let me ask you, uh, this is a genuine question. What would be the purpose running the ball if you're not trying to get a first down? There's no, there's no point. If you're not trying to get a first down, put your knee on the ground yeah. and punt it with 15 seconds left. Yeah. But, because but you – Thinking that we could still possibly get the first down and then we, you know, the game is over. You know. but, but, but if you're not running a play to actually really get the first down – and they're yeah. they're piling up the middle, like, and you're just running the ball up the middle. It's yeah. not going to go anywhere. Sticking that ball at this point, and everyone's yeah. pulling at that ball. You, you, I mean, goodness, if you fumble that ball, like, I mean, I guess it would be worse than them punting it. But it's like there's no point. You, you put your knee down. There's 15 seconds left. Punt the ball. They got to go 80 yards Limit to score. It, Limit huh? Limit your fuck ups, because yeah, well, you could possibly fumble. And then you also have to punt, get the ball to the punter, get a good punt off. It could get blocked and whatnot. But yeah. the least amount of fuck-ups you have that's available to fuck up, that's better for you as a team. So, I mean. And people said that Nick Saban, they felt that. I mean, I watched some shows yesterday where they were saying Nick Saban got out-coached. I don't think he got out-coached at all. No, I think I think, I think think Michigan's just a better team, and they I don't think it's close. A couple of plays that could have went here and there. Yeah, and, you know. How they and handle it, and how they handle motions. They handle motions pretty terrible. Mm -hmm. But it was a simple switch on that one on the third. It's two yeah. game over right there. All I, I seen the linebacker yell out to the to the nickel back, "Hey man, push out!" Because he's telling him, "Hey, they're bunching up. If I'm not coming to the flats. I'm taking the first guy that takes come underneath." So we're all working together. There's four people against three. We're all working together here to handle this this, this bunch combination. If you handle it well, that thing's dead. You're taking away the flats, you're taking away the underneath. The quarterback has to make another read. Who knows what he does at that point? He holds the ball, your D line gets there. The game is over. Now we're looking at this in a whole different, you know, light. I mean, to me, that game should have been 20 to 3 at halftime. It, it, it yeah. was, and yet it was 13 7. And then you blink your eye, and Michigan Alabama's like, winning. Alabama's Michigan. winning 20 to 13. Yeah. Well, I, was, I always say, you leave a duck hope. And that yeah. duck don't think they can play with you. So yeah. you want to smash them. And not saying that Alabama are ducks because we know that they've been no, no. a their team for a long time. But in this case of scenario, Michigan looked like the better team for most of the game. They should have been up more. But, I mean, kudos to Alabama for keeping it close and giving themselves a chance to come back later on. Oh, by the way, on that on that play, that last play, I don't know what number 65 was doing, that right tackle for Alabama. I mean, you have a play where he literally just tripped himself. He crossed his legs. I don't know who he was looking at because if you look at him initially, his head is looking one direction. There's only one guy to block. It's that yeah. that linebacker that completely jacked him up, which yeah. should never happen. If yeah. that was a running, that was a running play. Let, let's be real. That wasn't a pass. There was no passing. There. That was a running play. It was, it was really. To, you wanted to see what happened if that linebacker goes out with the running back then. He doesn't go out, he throw it. But the linebacker was a little late because he didn't know what was going on. He was looking for a switch himself. But once he realized it wasn't, he was like, oh, shit, that's me. And they're like, he could have threw it there. It would have been tough because it was about five yards behind or six, seven yards. I mean, he would have been catching the ball at the 10-yard line. Like, yeah, that's – Make a move in one-on-one -on -one situation. But, no, it, he made the right decision. He just – He tripped over 65's leg. <laughs> he had to speed up the process. I think he still would have got in there because he had more room than it looked like by that blitzing – DB because he came out so wide. He could have easily snuck in between him, but a little bit outside of the tackle and, and got in there. Fair assessment. I think for me, um, it's interesting that both teams that got over FSU lost. That's just the first thing I thought about. Second thing was Washington could have lost that game. Yeah. Absolutely could have lost that game. Yeah. So it just it's hard to fathom that the thought that FSU wouldn't have been competitive in this game is it's a little hard to um to see that because there was nothing exciting about Texas and they still could have won that game. They nothing about them just jumped off the screen. I thought they should have brought Arch Manning in. We all wanted to see him. I personally um I, I think not why it was a it was a one score game. Yeah, yeah why they, not? Yeah no re no reason to bring him in. They 
They were scoring. They looked like they didn't want to be there. Some of those players looked like they didn't want to be there. It no, was a just, weird. It was a I don't weird. Think they're just that good. That Washington has the best offensive line in the country. They couldn't get yeah. near Michael Penix the whole game. And yeah. that guy is. I mean, that guy is good. He, he is. He is. He is good. Now, I, you know, that game with Michigan is going to come down to one thing: defensive line versus offensive line. If Michigan can get to him, I mean, I think Michigan's going to win the game rather easily. But yeah, um, Michigan's going to put fifty it, on it, them. It, I think Michigan's going to beat them rather easily because I don't think mm-hmm. Washington can't stop a running nose. Well, they can, you know? but they only their only their only reason they only way to survive would be to score. And yeah. like, like a, he'll definitely have to put up like a bitch young type of game. Oh, he'll be up to four hundred yards. Up you know, he'll have to kill have it. To put up forty but or fifty. I I never thought I never thought Texas was in the game. I'm watching no, this game. Won't. I'm like Texas is not even in this game, and yet. They're in the game. You, they're they're in the game. Like, You're like, what is going on here? The entire time they were in the <clears> game, <throat> they were in. It didn't feel that way, but yeah. they, they gained the entire time. So yeah, that with that being said, it's a perfect segue going in from playoff uh, football into something adjacent, playoff like basketball. Another uh, topic that uh, Rudy's a huge fan of. Let's dive Very- into the in season NBA tournament. We're a few weeks out, so I think everyone has a chance to have their own assessment, their own thoughts, their own comments about it. I personally think it was great for the game. I think it got people. Did you hear anything? About- yeah, at this point, he had to come back. He froze up. He yeah, totally froze up. I froze up now. Totally yeah. froze up. Didn't hear anything. Yeah. Okay. What about now? Yeah. Now you're okay. Okay. So let's dive into the in season tournament. One of my favorite topics. It's one one of Rudy's uh, favorite topics to harp on as well. Um, it, we're a few weeks out of this the in season tournament, so everyone has their chance to have their comments, their thoughts, their soliloquies. I personally think the in season tournament was successful for a multitude of reasons. It got people excited about pre Christmas basketball, which never happens. Um, but some people have a problem with the banner being raised in LA. Some people have a problem with the post basketball product that we're getting after the in season tournament. So I'm just gonna give the guy the floor to know. the guys and see what they feel. What's the guy? <laughs> we know who it is. It's gonna be Rudy. Rudy, 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 Rudy. Well, I mean, I mean, you can talk about it if you want to. I mean, the the reality is, yeah. I mean, if you want to look at it from a, a financial perspective, I'm sure it went. It did very, really, really well for the NBA. <clears throat> I didn't like the the silly courts. Um, guys were slipping all over the place in many of those games. I mean, I think the Mavericks had a problem with their court that didn't even they had, they couldn't even put it down. Um, on television, it looked horrible as far as those courts. When you have red on red, I mean, it's absolutely blinding. Now, as to the actual product of the game, I mean, you have predetermined pools, and some pools are clearly more difficult than other pools. Yes, you have to win your individual games. Yes, you have to hope that you don't have injury. That all goes into it. However, it's a problem when, I mean, look, the Lakers won. Fine. I think the thing was set up for the Lakers to win. They got put in the softest pool, and it wasn't close. And then they played pretty much every game at home, and they got, look, Indiana beat Milwaukee. It looks like Milwaukee and Indiana have a, have a little bit of a thing going on there as well now because Indiana, Indiana just beat them again. And, <laughs> you, know, you know, the matchup for Milwaukee with Indiana might be a bad one, actually. However. And, yeah, we all were hoping for, you know, the Celtics. I mean, I was hoping for the Heat because I'm a Heat fan, but you're looking at the Celtics or the Bucks, and the Pacers get in there, and then they completely lay an egg in that game. Now, the Lakers were 7-0 and in tournament play. My problem with the whole tournament concept is that you're doing it over seven, eight weeks. Run those games back to back to back to back because it, it, it's, it's silly in itself that you have them spaced out because you don't know what can happen from week to week. And I mean, look, if my, Miami lost Jimmy Butler, he didn't play. You know, there were teams that didn't have guys play. Phoenix, who the, who played for Phoenix? <laughs> you know, like Bradley Bills. Bradley Bills been out for most of the year. That's the only person. So don't say everyone's played because he's twenty points a game. Um, he- yeah, when he's on, he's twenty to twenty five a game. Like he has six. All right, so, and you know what? And if LeBron has 10 one day, is he a 10-point score? Come on. Uh, you know, and I, yeah, the yeah. fact is the Lakers went 7-0, and and they win the tournament, and they raise a silly banner, which I think is ridiculous. You you win. Take your 500K, take your trophy, and enjoy it. 
but to raise a banner next to real world championship banners. The Lakers right now, besides that 7-0 streak, because the one game does not count against the Pacers, they're 10-17. and They're 3-8 and since they beat Indiana. So do they only care about games in November that are attached to some silly cup? It makes it, it, it devalues it because they should be coming off of that and, and being and having, I don't know, momentum, motivation, but they have none and they're not injured. This is how many games has Anthony Davis missed a handful at most LeBron's not missed more than a handful of games. And right now they're 17 and 17. They're the 10 seed. They're the 10 seed. So you have a team right now that won the cup. That is the 10 seed in the West. That's ridiculous. So they put all their eggs into winning this silly little tournament. Would they beat anyone in a seven game series right now? Hell no. And I'll tell you right now, the fact that matters, they're either not going to make the playoffs or they're going to be a playing team again. And that's your cup champion. It, it, can they, I think it should be, if you're going to do this, mix all the teams up. You don't have to have East versus West. Mix them all up and run these games back to back to back. So if you want to run it in November to December, run it the last three weeks of November, two weeks of November, and go boom, 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 boom. And now, you know, you have a, a legitimate situation where these these players are – you have teams that are not picking and choosing what to play games. I mean, I'm not a fan of it, but if you're going to do it, mix it all up because otherwise all we're doing is a one-game NCAA tournament-style thing based on divisions or based on conferences. Okay, my turn. Okay. And I do think LeBron's a massive flipping diva, and I get sick and tired – I'm not going to use the other words I used before about him, but I think he's a massive diva. And if, and if that crap that just came up earlier this week where his toe was clearly on the line and this, oh, my goodness, what? there's still shots of his toe on the line shooting that three-point shot. And he is posting on social media a picture of that someone else posted before his toe got on the line and then pushing that narrative. It's absolute bullshit. You're the best. You're the you're the you're still the face of the NBA. And what you're basically telling people, and a lot of people already feel this way, they feel the NBA is rigged. I don't feel that way, actually. I feel every sport. I, 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 oh, the, I, well, when you have you don't win what you think. No, I don't feel that way. I I lose all the time. I I I bet the wrong way. I bet with my my heart and not my brain. Yeah, so um. So I, that's huh? what I and somebody else won, but they took the other side of the exactly, game. exactly. Someone else won. So I don't think the game is rigged, but I do think that when you make statements like "It's my birthday," like what did you want the NBA to give it to you because it's your birthday? Yeah. You whiny, you whiny fuck. Like yeah. stop. All I want and, 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 and all it does is it create. It, I mean, it, the man, and you know he was, and you know his toe was on the line. All I want for my birthday is a big booty win. I take away. Yeah. Nah, but uh, um, uh, my my son Nico said hi. I'm sorry, I apologize. He's uh -huh. he'll be on the next show. Um, <laughs> about this whole playoff, you know, tournament scenario that Rudy's clearly upset about since the whole thing began. Um, I thought yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it from the beginning. By the way, it was amazing. Um. All of us was in tune with it. Rudy was up at 12 o'clock at night, writing us in the group chat, and we're like, Rudy, go to fucking sleep. Why are you still up? It wasn't about that tournament, though. What are you talking about? I do that all the time. That's true, but also... I, did, I didn't even watch the, the championship game. I was on a cruise. You you were enjoying the tournament. You enjoyed it. You had fun. We all did. Only thing that sucked was the courts a little bit. It was a little odd, but it got everybody talking. I was talking about it. Donald was talking about it. Rudy's upset about it, but there were some people that did like the courts. That's not good. There, we don't have to like it, but they won the players because the players were slipping all over the place. When we're talking about it, that makes for good. That made for good news. Um, the play was great, and this is my fucking problem with y'all and everybody around the fucking world. When LeBron does something, it's a fucking problem. Like if if Michael Jordan came in that tournament right now and won it, everybody be like, "Oh, he's such a competitor." Oh, Kobe Bryant, they don't care. They'll play for a Kit Kat bar. If it's on the line, they want to win it. And they want to—they want a, a piece of that Kit Kat bar. But when it comes to LeBron, 
if he does anything, they be like, it's set up for him to win. Oh, it wouldn't. It don't count for him. The bubble championship don't count for him. But I didn't say that. Hang. Oh, that was the toughest. That was the toughest. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But I know that if I know if Goran Dragic and Bam didn't get hurt, a lot of people. I know. We talk about it in that way. But the, oh, the, the, but we in what month were we in November when they happened, and we were all talking about it. We loved it. It was good basketball. All the teams competed, and if you say you didn't compete, then you're a bitch. Fuck it, just like the Clippers when they said, "Oh, we didn't compete against Denver that year in the bubble." They were bitches. Yeah, they were. They were. Things on the line. You should be if you're a competitor, you're gonna compete. And the Lakers competed. They won all the games they're supposed to. They could have lost. They like how they lost these games late after the tournament. They could have lost those games to those powder puff teams, like they've been losing after. They won. They stepped up for the challenge. AD stepped up. LeBron shot about fifty percent from three, maybe sixty. They all played well. It's unfortunate it didn't lead over for them to keep winning after, but they kept winning. They won when they needed to win. So, so would you would, would you would you trade would you trade an NBA Cup for an NBA championship? What happened? Would you trade an NBA Cup for an NBA championship? Oh, no, Rudy, that's bullshit. I don't know because they put a banner up for that bullshit. That doesn't matter. I'm saying what was on the line at that point was a was a was the. The, the tournament championship and they won it and they can it five hundred take your five hundred take your five hundred K. I'm hanging up my fucking banner. I won it. I'm hanging up my banner. Oh, uh, you're a you're a bitch. All you guys are bitches. No, okay, okay now nah, <laughs> you want to hang up banners for freaking district championships. I know. Oh no, we never did that. But I, I oh I, oh no, we never did that. This is less than that. We earned it. We, no, that's not less than a district championship in, in high school. Are you serious? A November tournament is worth more than a district championship in high school? Come on, man. It's only in a district. The NBA tournament was every team in the league. No, who was it? They didn't play every team. They played four teams in a bogus-ass pool, and they played nothing but Western Conference teams. They didn't play the Nuggets. They played the freaking Pelicans with a 400-pound Zion. And then they... Some pools, go feet, some pools go to 10 feet and some pools go to 6 feet. Can you yeah. swim? And they can fucking swim. And that's what they did. They won. Can you swim or not? Well, they can't swim now because they're 10 and 17 when they're not in those damn games. Not those games that counted, they won it. So what? They oh, did. Lord. Did oh, my team? God. Our team win. No, you took the championship. I wouldn't have won the damn banner. Yes, Are you serious? No, I wouldn't have just the same way you need to rip down that stupid Jordan banner. It's ridiculous. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. The, the Miami Heat re- retired the jersey of a guy who never played. And the guy, and they were retired because of that really turned over, took a dick in the ass what is that because he was ass kicked by Michael Jordan. It's ridiculous. Turner, Mitch, Banner. Oh, my God. A tournament ban. Again, I wouldn't hang up that bullshit if the Miami Heat won that shit. I wouldn't, buy a, I wouldn't buy a T-shirt that says tournament champion. Oh, I have the crap. Oh, of course you would. When it comes to years later, it's going to be. Because it's, because it's me arguing against LeBron. Of course you would. No, I don't. I, I respect LeBron. You just hate him. I think him. he's a great player. I think he's a great, great player. He, I think he's. A, I've always said that. He did step on the line. That was bullshit the other day, and I and I call him out when he does bullshit. But he does that all. But he does that bullshit all the time. He does. He does overreact all the time. time, all the time. And people freaking flock him. Oh my God, LeBron this, LeBron that. They, that whole damn thing. The Miami he had the Milwaukee Bucks in their damn pool. They had the New York Knicks in their pool. Look at the other, look at the other pools. The Lakers, the Lakers had nobody. They didn't know Bradley Bill wasn't going to play. They only played but thirty percent of his games over the last two seasons. So they, so they planned it for Bradley Bill not being there. I don't think Bro. they. Did. Oh, okay, man. They, they, they the, the damn whole thing was. Look at the damn. Did you actually look at the pools? I saw the pools, but what they had to do with. <laughs> Because if you did, every okay, every okay, pool okay. had three good teams. Okay, listen, Rudy. So when they got to, so they won their pool. So if every team that needed to win their pool won their pool, if Boston won their pool, Milwaukee won their pool, they would have all met up later on and played each other. If Denver won their pool, then they would have played the Lakers instead of fucking New Orleans. But no, they didn't win their pool. Yeah, because nobody, because Nikolai Jokic doesn't, Nikola Jokic doesn't care about freaking an in-season tournament. Oh. And how many guys for the Nuggets have been out this year? Injuries. Okay, who's fault? That's not their fault. That's All right, again, I didn't say anything was anyone's fault. But the pool, okay, AD, when your pool, when your pool is bad, come on, man. AD gets hurt a lot, so 
maybe they thought the Lakers were going to be out with, without AD and Bradley Bill was out, so it should be fucking even. But hey, AD stayed healthy. Mm-hmm. And yet, when he's healthy now, they can't win games. Ain't that something? I guess they don't take regular season games seriously, even though they're regular season games. Okay. Mm. All right. Who was it? who was in the Lakers pool? The Suns. Uh, I think the Memphis. Suns, the Grizzlies, without John Morant, Important. which we all knew John Morant was out Important. for twenty five games. We knew that, right? Important. We knew that, right? Yeah, we just knew making that. sure we knew that. Okay. The the who was who else? Was the, I'm sorry. Was the Blazers? Is it somebody? Somebody had and it. Utah, they have the three of the four worst teams in the conference in their pool. I thought Utah was going to be a little bit better than they are now. I mean, they, they beat the Heat, but, you know. Detroit was in somebody's pool. And you know what? That's great. I don't know what pool they were in, but I'm comparing it to Bulls. almost every. The Bulls were in somebody's pool. The Bulls are a great team. The, last. the, last. the, the last. Bulls are right now. The Bulls are right now actually in the play-in, believe it or not. Oh my God! But you, but you know what Utah, yeah. Memphis, and Portland are? They're three of the four worst teams in the freaking. Oh, they're three of the four worst teams in the Western Conference. And the the last one, the Spurs, the Lakers broke that streak against them, an eighteen game losing streak. Is somebody who's gonna do it? I'm glad it wasn't Heat. Perfect time to segue. Rudy has been able to get some of the heat off of his chest about the end season tournament. Um, I want to throw in a, a, a curveball. This wasn't in the production pre-meeting. Mm-hmm. It, just, it just came to me. Let's throw out some hypothetical NBA trades. I'm a Chicago Bulls fan. <laughs> so I'm going to throw this out there. I want to dumpster fire everybody and let everyone go. That's what I want to do as a GM of the Chicago Bulls. Let everyone go. Let Zach Levine go. Let Debo go, uh, DeMar DeRozan, um, the crook and the, the criminal, um, uh, Lonzo Ball, let him go. He's been stealing from us for three, four years now. Um, his family is mm-hmm. full of crooks. Shout out to LaMelo. He's pretty good. I would love him in a Bulls jersey. But we need to start from scratch. We are mediocre. And I think the basketball gods are jealous of our supremacy of the 90s. And they're not going to allow us to do any good until like 2040 so that's my hypothetical trades if you guys have any please just you know a couple minutes for the fans i mean Get I, into I, I got so, i mean first off i think the rj barrett trade was a was not a great trade i don't think the next hold up, i need to get it um hold they hold gave on, away to a 20 on. point score and a 15 point score and got a 15 point score and a, and a role player i don't i didn't really get that trade that's the same guy that they wouldn't trade kevin Durant. Hey. Yeah, I don't understand it. Like, I, I understand that the Knicks had three okay. lefties with yeah, R.J. Right. Barrett. And R.J. Barrett really came in when he was drafted to be the one. And then they bring in Brunson and now R.J. Barrett because, like, he has to score. So I understand. But you can't trade Emmanuel quickly. Like, that's ridiculous. I, I, that's ridiculous. I don't think that because the, they, they didn't want to give him $200 million. That's what it was. Yeah. They didn't want to pay him. And, and, and you know what? For him, I'm sure it's great. He's going back home. He's from Toronto. So I, I think that's a great situation for, situation for him. As far as trades, I would love DeMar DeRozan in a Heat jersey. Um, I think he fits the way we play, as I am a Heat fan. But we cannot trade Duncan Robinson for him. We cannot include Duncan Robinson in any trade for him. He's our best shooter. Um, He has – I mean, whatever therapist he went to see while the Heat was screwing around with him, man, they fixed this guy because he's a much better player. He his he's ball handling goes to the rim, the backdoor cuts. I mean, he's really changed his game. So you can't his contract now is a steal. A year yeah. and a half ago it was like, we gotta get rid of this contract. Yeah, but okay. it, it's a steal. Well, it's, it's Kyle true. Lowry. It's Kyle Lowry. Uh, okay. you, 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 yeah, you you get your Okay. The trade is, the trade is Kyle Lowry. Um, because Kyle Lowry is an expiring contract and, and they, they would, you know, lose him at the end of the year. Um and it's weird because Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan are best friends, so that would be a really funky situation that they're traded for each other. But, uh, yeah, I think – I mean, Kyle Lowry, you put them get together bought, with – Yeah, get bought out. Yeah, else, yeah right? you, you put them together with somebody else. I don't know who, but I would love DeMar DeRozan in a Heat jersey. Um, Jimmy yeah. Butler is right. always – does some things for us that yeah. we get from nobody else. You'll have Bam running point guard with Tyler Hero, and you'll be a committee. I mean, yeah, it's it's point guard by committee for sure. Um, I'll tell you what, Jaime Jaquez is a beast. 
is a beast. And he, I mean, realistically, he is the best rookie right now, in my opinion. I know Wembanyama, blah, blah, blah. The role that Hakez has popped I, into I, has been – Probably the top. Well, he, I mean, yeah, I guess technically, but he's in his second year. I mean, I know he's – I know he, on my rule, he's a rookie, but he's really in his second year. Hakez is – I mean, he's so mature. I mean – And but, Chet also – Hakez is still older than Chet. <laughs> no, 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 Hakez is so mature. He's like he's – he's an adult, you know, yeah, and he plays like an adult. How you're penalizing, how you're penalizing Chet because he's – No, I, I understand. I understand that. But I also think Chet plays with one of the top five players in basketball right now. That's true. Um, you know, he's playing with – We're going to get our top five player into the playoffs. So. Yeah, he decides he doesn't want to be a top five guy until we're in, in, in April and May and June. It's crazy. I've never seen a team that's so built for the playoffs because they can't win regular season games. Yes, Miami is definitely. But um, it, it, that's, the trade I would, that's the trade I would see. And I'm sure – I am sure the Lakers will trade somebody – because LeBron needs to have another trade added to his 188 trades in his career um, on teams he's been a part of. Because remember, this team was in the Western Conference Finals last year. They were still in the Western Conference Finals, and now it's a freaking train wreck. And it's no one's fault but everyone else not named Lechon. Okay? And you're going to see... I mean, D'Angelo Russell's been on the market forever, it seems like. They want to get rid of him so badly. Now they've talked about trading Austin Reeves, which I think is crazy. They've talked about firing Darvin Ham. I've heard that. Like, Darvin Ham won't last. So the guy who just won the NBA Cup as the coach might get fired before the season's done. You never know. Maybe. I think, I think the Lakers will make a move. They'll make a move. Yeah, a, doubt that. Doubt the firing. When your team is playing five hundred ball, you. Well, like, well, oh, oh, and you know what? Can they take more? Weird. Can they t- can they overpay more Heat players who don't play for them? Gabe has been hurt, also. I mean, not. No, t- no. Ken, Kendrick Nunn. They took okay. him, overpaid him. He did nothing there. Gabe, they took him over. I wanted to keep Gabe Vincent, not for thirty three million dollars. No, Ten million. They overpaid him. Well, it was $11 million a year. That's what the Lakers gave him. I would have given him eight. We offered him that. I would have loved to keep Gabe. He would, he would magically not be hurt playing for us. And, and he'd be effective because I don't think people realize that these guys that are role players for us, we develop them to do what we want them to do. And they think that these guys are all of a sudden going to become great players on their team. No. They fit our system. Schultz is having a decent season. He is. He is. Uh, the train I'll probably make is probably, I think Philly could be um, contenders up there. They get, they get Levine somehow over there. Take him. <laughs> what do you get for? But what do you get for him? What would I give up? Oh shit! It have to be. I mean, obviously it's going to be Tobias Harris in private. I don't life. want him. He doesn't make them better. I don't want Tobias. Ooh. I don't think Levine makes them better over yeah. Tobias Harris. I, you do. I mean, we've seen Tobias in the playoff not become the third guy. They need Actually, to Tobias will get off my books after this so year. I would we'll, take take him. we'll take I him. would take Levine over Tobias, uh, and then you have still Kelly Oubre, who's been playing amazing. We put a, Tobias and maybe Reed. I mean, and a pick in there somehow, because they have all types of things because of the whole Harden thing that they have. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Zach Levine has been a 20-point scorer the last five years. Don't give me hot Cheetos and think I'm going to take it. That's not that's not what this is. Y'all are cool. Y'all gonna take anything you can get. Yes, yeah. please, please. How, how many games is that? How many games has Zach Levine missed this year? I don't know if he's uh, missing games because he's hurt or because yeah, he's been hurt. Things are going actually, on with he's, he's being cleared right to play next week. But um, I would love to actually send him to LA to get some of their players. Um, I'll get Gabe. I like Gabe. Give me Gabe. Um, give me Austin Reeves because I'm gonna ask for Austin. Okay, I'm gonna ask to. for Austin. But you're gonna get AR. They're gonna give you uh, uh Rui and, and Prince. Because LeBron seems like he's very hip on. Zach him. Levine has missed fifty percent of his games this year. Yeah, they're gonna give you Rui and Prince. Oh, oh, and, and, and he's a rich Paul client. Send him to LA. Send him to yeah, LA. That's, I'm not mad at that. Send him to LA. We'll take Austin Reeves. White I'm, Jordan. I, I, I we'll say right now, if 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 the Lakers make that move, that's a terrible move. That's a terrible. They'll move. make it. Because he's a rich. Man. I know they'll, they'll, they'll no they'll make that move because LeBron James runs the team and he's the worst GM on the on the planet. 
they'll trade D'Angelo. They're not. They'll, they they will. They make, gotta get. Uh, they'll make that trade. Uh, they'll make that trade for him. You should see it's coming up. So one, he's a Rich Paul client. LeBron is friends with him. Um, he kind of fits the system. Friend, fr- just friends. Um, and I would want White Jordan, aka Austin Reeves. I would want Japanese Jordan, uh, Rui Hachimura. So just give me all the Jordans. Give me both Jordans, and y'all could take Zach. Uh, so, so Rich Paul and LeBron are just friends. N- no, I said LeBron and Zach Levine are friends. Oh, so, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Because yeah, you know, LeBron owns Rich Paul. Yeah, um, Rich Paul <laughs> is very chummy with the Bus family, so that's why a lot of his. I, I don't think that makes. I don't think that makes them better though. I don't think that helps the Lakers really at all, I, unless they're dumping off D'Angelo Russell somehow. Yeah, it'll be D'Angelo. I don't want because they blame because they blame him for everything. Like if if the sun if it rains in L.A., they're blaming D'Angelo Russell. It's like the Russell Westbrook thing. It, when Russell Westbrook was breathing, it was his fault. I would like D'Angelo over here in Miami. We need a point guard. I wouldn't mind. Huh? Okay. With that being said, us getting into hypothetical trades, we're winding down to the end of the episode. I hope you guys are having as much fun as we are. Uh, this thing is going to get a lot. It's going to become therapeutic sometimes. It's going to be angry sometimes. We're not going to agree. That's not what we're here for. So let's dive into the to the National Football League. I don't know if there's any football fans listening or watching, tuning in. Um, I was going to get onto Lamar Jackson's MVP run, but I think that's just obvious. That's just obvious. Everyone with eyes can see how great he is. We're not going to be the, all the other shows. Man, let's talk about sleeper teams whether they're good sleeper or bad sleeper. Let's talk about a good sleeper team. The Buffalo Bills are sneakily good. And the Philadelphia Eagles are really bad. Let's talk about the Bills and Eagles, guys. Bills and Eagles, what are your thoughts? Uh, Bills, they're pretty good. They they have a top five quarterback in the league. You have a top five quarterback in the league, you're automatically at the, at the top of the list of a contender. So, all it takes is for him to get hot in the playoffs, and he can get really hot. And he, can, he has a dual threat. He can run the ball. He can run over your line. He can run over your D-man. He can throw the ball where he has receivers out there pretty good, and now he's starting to run the ball. They're giving Cook the ball, who's actually looking like Dalvin now. <laughs> he's looking good. The young Dalvin. Um, so I like the Bills, man, but it's going to be a it's, it's the challenge of this week. I think they need to beat the Dolphins. If they beat the Dolphins, and they get the division title, and they get to play at home at least once. I think it's just so hard to win all the games on the road. So um, I like the Bills um, over the Eagles right now. That defense is terrible. Brad Bill in the corner is, oh my lord, he's not really doing good. I right? think that Anthony Jones coming down, he's been horrible. The Eagles defense has been terrible. Um, Jalen Hurts is turning the ball over, but he's still playing well in my eyes. I have no problem with what he's doing. Um, AJ Brown is becoming a baby in my eyes. He cries about everything. When we have a receiver that's doing that, that, that doesn't go well for the offense. Everybody's walking the edge. It looks like the knee. I'm sorry, looking in. Like he's walking around. And AJ Brown's a fucking mad for no reason. NBA young boy. Nigga, smile. <laughs> smile, bro. Please smile. What the fuck is wrong with you, bro? Um, but obviously they have problems with my, um, my big sleeper team to win is the Rams, man. I like the way I like the way Stafford throwing the ball. He has um, Cup now. He has the other receiver. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his name. Puka, 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 Puka Nakua. Yeah, that that guy. He's been playing well. Uh, the quarterback's been playing well, and like I said, you have a top quarterback. Dude. Good chances is you're gonna play well in the playoffs, and I think that game travels. They can travel on the road and play anybody, and it'll still be a close game. And they're not scared of the 49ers, who obviously one of the top teams in the, in the conference and the Rams. I mean, and the Cowboys. So I like the Rams as my top sleeper team in the NFC. And the Bills would be the NFC. Some, I had some hope for Miami, the Miami Dolphins uh, going into last weekend. I didn't think we would get shellacked by 37. Mm, um, you know, we also, uh, this is a touchy subject for me because I don't, Understand why Bradley Chubb was even in the game with three minutes to go. Everybody, you, 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 you he, nobody was out, Nick. Nobody, 
Nobody. They they have a backup defensive end. Okay, listen. Bradley Chubb got no need to be in the game with down thirty five points. A non contact injury. More yes, the, those are the ones that likely happen. It's going to happen anyway. So if it didn't happen at that point, well, you know what? Let it happen against Buffalo. I mean, but who? So who would have been? Who a place player that you would sacrifice? Because obviously, you just sacrifice. Player, I would sacrifice, dude. They got they got backup defensive ends. You do know right. you have a three quarterbacks on the roster. You have a kicker. You have a punter. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Nick. Nick. Early, earlier this week, you told me there's only 44 players on the roster. There's 48. Know. Okay, there's there's a couple more. Yeah, let's let's be real. You okay. can put a backup in there for Bradley Chubb. You don't got to. He doesn't play every snap as it is. Okay, but he still wanted to play. He's a competitor. He's gonna want to. He wanted to. Play. Oh, oh. So now we talking about we, you want to compete when you're down thirty five? Yeah, I'm trying to get my stats. I got some awards. I gotta get. I gotta stats. Get, I gotta get. Hey, babe. But no, no. All right, all right. Well, yeah. now he ain't. Now he's gonna get cut. Yeah, you can't take everybody out. And. I didn't say take everybody. I said take out your best pass rusher. Your Rudy, best both, pass both, rusher. Both teams only take out their quarterback and their All running right, man. And okay. Because your running backs get pounded on, mm-hmm. pause, and your quarterback could get hit and hurt. And that changed mm-hmm. your, whole, your whole season. But your DNs usually don't come out. Your, your, your DBs usually don't come out. It's a quite a literally. Oh, we, 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 we certainly had a backup at, uh, for cornerback. A guy that can't cover his fucking nut with a condom. <laughs> Eli Apple is the worst cornerback I've ever seen play professional football. I almost, he is terrible. I almost showed up to the Dolphin facility the next you day. You might have they they tried out eight guys this this week. Not you might players. as well have. Hey, man. You might as well have because that dude is awful. He is so bad. He's so bad. I, I I mean, man, now I know what they're talking about in Cincinnati or whatever the hell he was playing. Because he is terrible. And I mean, you know, Xavier Howard has been disappointing. But, you know, going back to what you were talking about, look, Buffalo scares the shit out of me as a Dolphins fan. And, but what scares me more is that if Miami wins on Sunday, they're going to play Buffalo the week after, potentially, which is going to be a disaster. They will not beat them twice in a row. I almost, I almost would rather lose at this point. No. I'd rather play in Kansas City than play Buffalo twice in a row. Because Kansas City's not very good. I'd rather be home with the two seed. Uh, yeah, in theory, if you're not playing a rematch of a week earlier against your division rival, Man. who's just as good as you. You just have to beat him again. That's just what it is. Uh, yeah, and, and, and you know that's not easy. I think it's not easy, but if you... It's actually, it's actually really hard. If you want to get to where you want to go. You yeah, yeah, and you you know what? I actually, I, Kansas City's not very good. You can't and out of this playoff. What you what? You no, you can't. You can't. But it's but yeah. If Miami wins, there is a possibility that Miami will play Buffalo again in a week. Yeah, um, yeah you you do. But I, I tell you this, Buffalo for all the the hype that they've been getting because they've won four in a row. They've not been good. They have, they have, these have been like, they won by three, they won by two, they won by six. Like, the the hype around it, they have not been, they just, what? They beat the Cowboys by 21. And you know how many yards Josh Allen threw for in that game? 94. Five. 94 yards. He threw 15 passes. Josh Allen might be the best, might be the second best quarterback right now in the league behind Lamar Jackson for MVP. But Josh Allen, the last four weeks, has been trash. He's been trash. He's thrown three, he's thrown three touchdown passes in four games. He's run for six because they hand his big ass the ball at the three yard line. <laughs> you know, huh? All into the throwing touchdown passes because if I get well, he's thrown for he hasn't thrown he's thrown head it off. He's thrown for under two hundred thirty seven yards in four straight games. But this is the guy that we're talking about for MVP because he has lots of touchdowns. And I've heard on TV, he has so, touchdowns. Great, big deal. That's a good thing, though. When you're well, winning, the, yeah. When you're so that's and they're probably always been Josh Allen heavy. So now that they're showing that we well, don't always have to lean on Josh, we give the cook. Yeah. Our defense could play well, and we can help, I, we can do the little I, thing. Now, but again, they're not winning. They're not blowing anybody out. They're having close game after close. Even the game with the Cowboys, that was all James Cook. That yeah. whole game was James Cook. Yeah. He was incredible. Um. But, yes, they do scare the crap out of me as a Dolphins fan. However, after getting absolutely bent over on Sunday by the Ravens, um, 
Yeah, that 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 team is the scariest, worst matchup for the Dolphins on the planet. The um, so that- man, Lamar Lamar Jackson, I, I bro, how, how, how- I could I I could not I I, I mean. Were they all just wide open in that game? Hey, that play they that were wide did, open the whole game. Hey, that play that he did where he just dis, dis, decepted the, the, the Dolphins by showing that he was a lefty or rolling out left, and they came back right and hit the Zay. I said, oh, my gosh. But but, but but he was, but these guys were – If I'm on the other side of the field, I'm saying, oh, that ball's not coming my way. Oh, shit, it's coming to me. And he, had a perfect, he had a perfect QB rating. Hey. He said – Two perfect QB ratings against the Dolphins. They were making one-hand catches also. <laughs> no, look, no, look, that was the one catch. That was ridiculous, but you can't have that guy get open like that. It was fourth and seven. You know, that was a close game in the that first was. half. And yeah. then Tua completely shit it away. I Let's mean, the pick he threw before the half was terrible. Then, he, <laughs> then, they get a, then they get a fumble, and he throws another pick into four people. Like, where was Tyree Kill going to catch that ball? Tyreek looked at him and said, fuck you. You saw that the safety coming there. There were four balls there. There were four. There. If he went up to catch that ball, if he didn't get he killed. Got killed. Well, no, no. By NFL yeah. rules today, they have to let him catch it. Well, you still might get hit. Yeah, and I don't need Tyreek Hill getting hit. But that was, the like, Tua, it, it reminded me of the Buffalo game because they started that game off great, but their mm-hmm. defense couldn't stop anything, and it was the same shit. But Lamar Jackson, I mean, my God, he was perfect. Maybe he was all, perfect. There may be he was all, perfect. Waddle more than Tyreek. No, they need oh, they mi- no, they missed Waddle badly. They, they missed Waddle badly. They need. They both. did miss. They need them both. No, no question. Um, Buff- Go ahead. But uh, the sleeper, it's Buffalo. I mean, Buffalo's a sleeper for no, sure. Um, you know, I, I, because I think Buffalo's that good. And even though they've won these games, like they haven't looked good, they're winning, and yeah. and, and that's and winning in the NFL is still hard. And, and that's why I get really bothered when people say, you know, as a Dolphins fan, like, give us a little credit this year. We are 11-5, and five, and just because we've beaten a bunch of bad teams per se, those bad teams have won games. And the, the Bills nearly lost to the Patriots last weekend, and they're a bad team. So, you know, and the Chargers the week before, they got a gift. You know, they were losing that game. It was a game-winning field goal that won them the game. So, it, it, it but they're winning, and that's all that matters at the end of the day is yeah. that you win these games. The Eagles now, bro, they had people – I think what's coming with the Eagles is that the reality set in that they weren't that good to begin with. They won eight games by one score in their first their 10 and one start. Eight. Eight. Like, and a bunch of those, if you look at them, if you watch those games, because I, I saw a few of them, they got lucky. I mean, it's better to be lucky than good. They got lucky. They had a couple things go their way. Um, we know that Chiefs game, come on, that was pass interference. You know, um, they should have lost that game. And there was a few others that they should have lost. Now, their defense has been atrocious. They have, since week 13, they are 31st in points per game. Um, 29th in, was it 29th and third, 31st in third down percentage. 31st in run zone touch red zone touchdowns. Like, yeah, they're they're they've been they've been pretty terrible. But I also don't think Jalen Hurts has been very good. I think he's been okay. He, he's not been very he's also been hurt. Um, yeah. but he's not been very good. He can't, he's and like he used to. He, he's not he, he's because he's hurt. He's hurting and he's not been very good. So you combine that with now, what happened last weekend is unacceptable. You're up 21 6 against the Cardinals and you lose. Like that's ridiculous. That, that that's ridiculous. The, the Eagles are done. The Eagles are done in the first round. Yeah. Huh? Tyler Murray's watching film this year. Yeah, he's played. The, he played the worst defense in the NFL right now. Um, well, heck, the Dolphins would probably beat the Eagles right now. They, well, they yeah. um, right now, not 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 six hey, six weeks ago. Right now. You know um, you no, know it's crazy that we're calling that the Chiefs could be called a sleeper team because how bad they've been playing. Patrick Mahomes' team could be called a sleeper team, but I don't they're think- not. They're not. They're not. They're not going. They're not going anywhere this year, man. No, not with those receivers. They're not going anywhere this year. I mean, I, I, you know, the defense is good enough to carry them to the playoffs, though. And Patrick Mahomes. I I, I I think the Eagles and Chiefs could realistically be home after the first round. I think the Eagles are done. 
but the Chiefs could realistically, even at home, lose their first round game. My sleeper team is the Detroit Lions. The viewers and listeners might be shocked by that one. I just think they play good football. And and to piggyback off what Rudy said earlier, winning in the National Football League is very hard. Just winning a game. And we know that the the Cowboys robbed them. We're not going to get into that. Oh, God, that was terrible. They robbed them. But the Lions just play good football. They remind me of like a Bill Belichick team from years back. They just play good football. There isn't anyone that's like off their screen, but they don't make many mistakes. They're just a good football team, and I wouldn't be shocked if they're in the Super Bowl. They invited their head coach. Yes. I love Dan Campbell. Um, Yeah. uh, Dan Campbell's the... Yeah, we can hear you now. You kind of broke, you froze up. I don't have a problem. But yeah, um, Dan Campbell's really good. Uh, the team's really good, and I just think that it wouldn't be shocking to see them in the Super Bowl. I don't have a problem. I don't think anyone's me- beating that mystical creature, Lamar Jackson. I don't think anyone's beating him, but I could see the Lions in the Super Bowl. I could see that. I don't have a problem with him going for it either, again and again. I'm, uh, uh, I'm not sure, and I have to go look at it. Once you say uh, that you're going for a two, once you say you're going for a two point conversion, I don't know if you could after a penalty you, say, oh, you, oh, yeah, oh, you can. can, yeah, you can, yeah, or you can move the ball back to the thirty, yeah, four, and it might, it might, it might make it a forty yard extra point, but he, he, I, I mean, you sure you could do that? Yeah, no, you can, you can go to a back and do an extra kick, an extra point. I, I, the problem that I have is that he did it. They got a gift the second time on the offside. Well, Michael Parsons is all sides, mm-hmm. I think. And then the play they ran was just didn't make – it wasn't – he didn't. He wasn't even in the end zone. He was yeah. at the two-yard line. Yeah. The the ball was poorly thrown and it was at the two-yard line, I think. Am I, am I remembering the right play? Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yeah. yeah it was, it was. Um, I, I just think it's really sad that the NFL will not own these errors. <laughs> They said you're ruining seasons. They said they said make sure that you report correctly. He was standing. He's six foot nine, man. He's standing in front of the ref. Not me. Like Not what me. are we talking about? Yes, the man yes. is six nine, standing in front of the ref, saying I'm reporting. Seventy wasn't even near that huddle at that point. Well, they 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 sent multiple people there on purpose, but I know they, to confuse sent, the defense. The yeah, but still. The NFL are like no, not no. Me. It, it 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 is becoming it is becoming watching the mistakes that these officials are making in games. It's costing seasons because you're talking about the difference of home field advantage throughout the playoffs. It's been the if, because if the Niners had lost, if the Niners were to, I mean, the game doesn't matter now against the Rams, but if Detroit had won, this Rams team is good, mm-hmm. and they're playing this Sunday, right? Yeah. And if the Rams were to win and Detroit wins, Detroit's the one seed. Yeah. And that's, that is, they can't make these mistakes. Yeah. And it seems like it always goes the way of the Cowboys. Right. I mean, yeah. my yeah. God. It takes that impact, the playoffs, whatnot. So <clears throat> just like the year we had on side, offsides call, it's, every year it's going to be a call here and there. Can you overcome the call? Oh, what, what do you mean off? What do you mean? Okay, wait, wait. You, you're talking about what? An offsides in, when an, a guy is offsides in comparison to when the guy actually reports that's true. and the referee. Says the wrong guy. That's true. I mean, but every year there's a there's a call, it's a pass interference. But I guess I get what you're saying. Those are judgment calls. This one is just yeah. I can me. I can I can do the judgment call yeah, this when you problem. yeah. And Dan Campbell says I told the official exactly what we were gonna do before the game. Yeah, that's true. That's I, I, I mean, and then the guy is there, and they say, oh, he didn't report. I mean, that guy's that, a that guy's a mountain. He was standing right in front of you, and he was the right. first guy reporting to you. To, to the official credit, the only thing we'll say is, mm-hmm. told me at the beginning of the game, it's four hours later, <laughs> bitch. I ain't, I don't forgot. I, my bad. <laughs> That's on me. That's the only thing I say they should have said. It was, it's and he should me. be fired for that. It's he should me. be fired. Sh- that whole crew, the whole crew should be fired. Because that's the know, same crew that's no, butchered multiple told, games this year. He only, told, he only told one official. So if I'm the other official, the, not the whole crew, not me. Well, well, but you're part of the crew. The crew is together all year, right? <laughs> not today. Not today, second. I am not part of that crew. 
that. Well, that crew is that that whole crew has made mistakes all yeah. year. Isn't that the yeah. crew that didn't call pass interference in the Chiefs uh, game versus the Eagles? That's true. I don't know That's if that was the same crew, but I know there was a few. Was, that crew, was, I've, I, I've read that crew has been a part of a lot of mistakes this year. Yeah, it was too. Well, it seems like we're ending this show on the officiating note. Uh, what about the Super Bowl picks? You want to do those or no? I mean, I thought I thought I threw mine's in Detroit. Oh, I didn't. Mean, oh, Super Bowl. Oh, t- Super Bowl winners and why? I mean, I think the Super Bowl is going to be San Fran and, De- and Baltimore. And I think so San Fran was. I, you're still on the Purdy train. You're still on yeah, I think first. I think San Fran's gonna win the Super Bowl still. Hey, um, wait, wait, I, wait, I think, think they play. You think they're gonna win it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I think I think San Fran's gonna. I think I think Baltimore okay, they will get there. Picks. And what? And, and he won't, won't throw five picks. picks. He won't throw five picks this time. Wait, you, wait, you know, wait, um, Rudy, tell me more. Tell me more. Tell you more. You San Fran's <laughs> gonna win it all. Well, I think San Fran's gonna win the West easily. I mean, the NFC, the NFC easily, um, easily, easily. easily. I don't. I don't think those games are even going to be competitive. Uh, I do like Detroit. I think Detroit, if they were at home, would be a serious threat. Eagles are toast. The Cowboys have no balls, and uh, you know, I mean, if Baker Mayfield goes to the Super Bowl, that would be comedy, but that's not going to happen. Um, who the hell's left? They have the Vi- they have the Viking. No, the Vikings got Green, blown Green out Bay, by Green Bay this Green way. It's playing for they. They're more than likely would be. I think it's Green Bay. Yeah. I think everybody from like NFC South still has a chance. Like Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, because they're yeah. Um, yeah, but no, I, I I I think San Fran's gonna get to this. I think San Fran gets to the Super Bowl easily. Um, I think Baltimore is probably gonna be there, uh, unless they have a. Um, I mean, I can't. The way they've been, the way they run the ball. I mean, they run the ball. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if people understand that Gus Edwards was a backup running back at Miami. And he transferred to Rutgers. And he's what does that mean? that's not a bad thing. Like, Rutgers should beat Miami. No, the co- the the coach the coaching at University of Miami has been so bad for so long. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it means to me. Is um, that this guy who couldn't get on the field at Miami for the most part um is a starting running back for the Baltimore Ravens. And he fits there, he fits them perfectly. Um yeah, I, I think it's San Fran and Baltimore. I just don't think San Fran's going to – I don't think Purdy throws four picks again. Well, I mean, the, the fifth one was Sam Darnold. I don't think they throw five picks. You know, it, 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 he played terribly in that game. And the and the, Ram, and the Ravens played very, very well. Um, I got one for you. But, yeah. Nick, Nick, book, uh, book Super Bowl it. pick. Super Bowl book pick it. before we get out of here. Book it. Book Baker who? Mayfield versus Joe Black. Whoa. Didn't expect that one. So you're saying the Bucks and the Browns in the Super Bowl? No, nah, this, this is when we just throw out, throwing out throwing out bullshit on the wall, right? <laughs> this will come back to bite me. That shit might happen. That'll, that'll be that'll be the most unwatched Super Bowl in history. <laughs> no, they're gonna watch it. They're still people are still gonna watch this the Super Bowl. But I would watch it for Usher and the halftime show for me personally. But yeah, I think everybody could watch what? it because they were like, "What the <laughs> fuck is happening? How the hell did this happen?" But uh. I'm going to go with the I, – I called it out. I'm not changing my pick. The Miami Dolphins versus the Dallas Cowboys. I, I will say this. That would be God, a very God, entertaining no. Super Bowl. I, I just think that playing a team, like you said earlier, they're going to overcome the 49ers. I think they get there. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I'm saying this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to follow this up then. Oh, I, I I owe you a hundred bucks on the Bengals. No, 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 we're not betting. No, 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 I'm not betting. I, I'll bet you a hundred dollars on the Cowboys. No, just send me my hundred dollars when when the season ends. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing that. But, uh, I'm gonna go with the Dolphins. <laughs> the Cowboys. I think the Dolph- I think it's a team's gonna get hot and on the run. That's what playoffs are about. And I like Tyreek Hill, Waddle, um, longest tours playing decent ball. They had the ball the most are and. And A chain. Uh, I like the Dolphins and I like the Cowboys. I like that to play. What, what, what do you think of the Dolphins' offensive play calling? Oh shoot! You know what? I take that back. Dolphins have too many injuries. I'm sorry. I just was riding on them. I think <laughs> this year was gonna. I, I I I take it back. I'm going with the uh, Baltimore Baltimore Cowboys. I'm just wondering what, what, what. I mean, 
I'm a Dolphins fan, but the Dolphins' offense system is great versus certain teams, but it, but they seem to not adjust during games. It's weird. It's everything's time. Everything is always a timing based route. Exactly. It's never. There's never anyone just wide open. Yeah. So. You know, it's always just timing based. West Coast offense, so West Coast is always timing. But I just think you have to take shots just to be like, fuck it. Like you, you have to. Throw, you can't just throw it across the middle of the field when everybody knows that's what you do now. Like everybody knows that they're trying to throw these, they're trying to throw these dig routes right behind the linebackers, mm-hmm. and teams are dropping their linebackers in their in that place and reading to his eyes like he made last week. But if you take more shots against these DBs, because DBs aren't playing the ball so well down the field, and you got a good chance to uh, get a pass interference call just because how the league is set up for it right now. So you take more shots down the field with just being Waddle and Tyreek. But they need somebody who's going to work the middle better than they've been working. They need a big receiver, somebody tight end. Um, I think when they lost the tight end from last year to second, I think that was big. But they didn't use him how he would get used before in that mm-hmm. offense. But I think he would do well if he was still there. But I mean, I think Darren Smythe did a really good job versus Baltimore, actually. I mean, he yeah. made some plays across him. And I, I, I don't dislike him. I yeah. mean, you saw Chase Claypool got a few minutes and then dropped a touchdown pass. <laughs> um, yeah. He's the big. You know, guy. He's what? huge. He's six foot four. He's what six four two forty. He's he's your dig runner. He's the guy that makes the tough catches across the middle. That's what he should be doing. And you letting Tyreek don't have shouldn't have to be subjected to those hits. He should be running down the field. He should be running hitches, comebacks, screens, all the stuff on the outside. Or you got him running quick little shallow routes. But you don't really want him running digs and posts right to safety. That's just not what I want my five nine receiver doing. Who runs a four two. And Waddle's just basically the same size. I want them going vertical more than lateral, unless they're throwing screens in them to them. But it's just little things like that in space. But we'll see how that how that works out, man. It should be fun though, man. We have one more week of football. Let's enjoy it. Then we have the playoffs. And then basketball. Basketball, basketball, basketball. I, I'm looking forward to all things basketball. Not to say that I'm not a fan of the the league. But um I'm a bigger fan of the association. Just, just throwing that out there. I'm a little biased. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, definitely. I want to leave the floor up for the co-host to see if you have any last remarks. Um, I'm excited about the season. We're gonna call. Come on now. This is our first season. Send in your comments. Tell us if you want uh, uh, Rudy to change the color of his beard. Uh, let us know if you want Nick to wear a different graphic tee. Oh, uh, let me know every, every time. Let me know if you would like uh, what designs you would like me to put in my braids. It, it's it's an open forum for you guys. Open forum for the fans. Last remarks from the guys. Last remarks. Um, like I said, man, let's enjoy this last week of football, man. It was a great show today, man. I'm ready to do this every week. Talk with you guys. Um. Uh, me and Rudy, obviously, y'all see that we get into it, and it's going to be a little heated when it comes to basketball because I think Pat Bell would have averaged 20 points in uh, 1990. Mm. Basketball had changed. I think, you know, Pat Bell would have been an all star back then. But hey, neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. But um, I think it's going to be a fun show, man. It's on the movie, man. Go ahead and tell them how you feel. I have no response to the Pat Beverly comments because we've already had this conversation privately. and. Yeah, apparently he uh, – forget it. Not even worth it. Um, <laughs> not even worth it. I don't have – I could do this for another 20 minutes then. But, yeah. uh, no, yeah. it's, it's yeah. Awesome, yeah. Awesome, awesome awesome show. Um, I am certainly looking forward to seeing if my Dolphins can uh, win and win a division for the first time since 2008. It would be real nice. Uh, then host a playoff game um, and, and see where it goes from there. As far as the heat. The, the, the most guaranteed situation that you'll ever see in sports. The Heat jump out by 15, they're probably going to lose the game. Um, yeah. In the first half, <laughs> if they jump out by 15, they're probably going to lose, or it'll be a very close game. But more than likely, they lose. I mean, they lost a 22-1 to lead game over the Bulls. They lost uh, – I mean, they were 15 versus the Clippers this past week and lost by 19 points, I think. Like – they were down 20. Like, what the hell? I've never seen a team do this and this so much that it's it's like, I guess, you know. And then he, but, uh, he just hit Rudy up that day like, oh, 
this team is nice now. I believe. I, as soon as I oh, say God. I believe. Well, the thing is, I still believe. I just don't believe in them in the regular season. They do that. They do that. Okay. And the stupid thing is, they're a four seed right now. They're a four five. Like they're going to be the four or the five seed, and they're going to play a four five, and yeah. then they're going to play the the Bucks or the Celtics in round two, probably yeah. the Celtics, and then bust the Celtics ass again. And the foolish people be like, I don't know how they do it. You do it every year. <laughs> it's the same thing every year. Three of the last four years, they've been in the conference finals or the finals. I mean, like, like they're a they are a team made for the playoff style ball where it slows down a little bit. And they let a little bit more go. And then Jimmy Butler just becomes some type of, like, how I was zombie feeling. out there. I don't know. Huh? How I was. What? Team. <laughs> Me and Jimmy. On, on, hey, on that note, on, the, <laughs> on that note, when he's bringing back his 2-12 and 12 stats. We weren't, two and tw- we weren't 2-12. and 12. We were actually 6-21 and 21 that year. I don't remember six twenty, but hey. I'm not sure. Because you, yeah, yeah, but no, that was my worst. I mean, I don't want to say it, but that was my – Record wise, that was our worst record, but I we had really good players. It's it's just you know, you can blame me if you want to. But our players were football players, me, T.Y. Hilton, you know, yeah. And and then we also, I mean, we had situations where I don't know if people understand, but in AAU basketball, if you lose a game and you're in a pool, there's a point differential. We actually blew a game on purpose because of point differential that we were leading by like seven with a minute to go, but we had to win by like 15. So we ended up fouling to have the game go into overtime to hope because we were going to win by 15. Because it was like a minute to go. It was like, we're not going to win by 15. So we got to foul. The, the politics of youth basketball. Oh, it's crazy. That's a whole nother episode. <laughs> so with that being said, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. First episode, come on now. See you guys next week.